All right. So you'll hear me say this a few times, but welcome to Bronco Bound. This is the um, Drama and Academic Advising and Orientation session. Yesterday was Financial Aid and One Stop. Um, there are a lot of folks joining in, so I will go ahead and get started when the number of attendees kind of settles for those joining, and I'll repeat myself a few times. Um, so apologies for the redundancy. All right, looks like we're at 200 now. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. This is the um, Bronco Bound Advising and Orientation session. We'll get started in a few minutes once everyone has had a chance to join in. Seems like the number is slowing down. Okay, I will go ahead and get started. Hi everybody, my name is Yusel Aguilar. I'm an Associate Director of Admission here at Santa Clara and I will be moderating today's event. Uh, so I will be um, helping with the Q&A and, &A and um, if things come up in the chat, I will ask that you send questions to the Q&A. It's much easier for us to manage and there will be a lot of questions. I'm sure it'll be easier for us to manage that in the Q&A. So I would ask that you send them there. Um, we have, um, staff from both of those offices that will answer the questions in the Q&A portion as well as jump in and answer them um, and respond to them um, uh, via text on your questions there. So if you could send them into the Q&A, that would be great. I'll have the offices first introduce themselves and then I'll have the first office um, go ahead and start presenting. Um, but let's see, we want to start. Um, Cameron, do you want to go first? We can popcorn it. Hi, I'm uh, Cameron Berrio. My pronouns are he, they, and, uh, and I am the assistant director for new student and parent programs. And we're really excited to have you today and hope that uh, we give you a lot of information and a lot of excitement for what's to come this summer and the next four years. I'll go. Hi, everyone. My name is Gunjun Malakar. My pronouns are she, her. And I am an academic advisor at the Drama and Academic Advising and Resources Center. <clears throat> and we are super excited to have you all join us here today. Congratulations. And I'm going to bring my colleague Garrison here to also introduce himself. Yeah, good evening, everyone. My name is Garrison Dyer. I'm the Associate Dean in the Drama Center working with Gunjin. And uh, super excited you're here tonight. Looking forward to it. And um, hope you get a lot out of this session. Welcome. We have some student staff joining. Um, they'll help in the Q&A, um, uh, but you guys don't have to introduce yourselves if you don't want to, um, but just letting you know that they are here and they are available to help answer questions as we go through for the different offices. Perfect, great. So then I'll go ahead and get started. Um, hi everyone again. So, you know, we're gonna be um, talking a little bit with you about how to, prep for your advising and registration session that's coming up, right? And so um, that being said, I do have um, quite some information to share with you, you know, a lot of important, you know, kind of planning uh, tips and things like that. So um, don't mind me if I'm going a little bit too fast uh, through our conversation, but as you have any questions and concerns that pop up, you know, feel free to please share those in the chat. And, um, you know, we have colleagues that will help, um, you know, kind of tackle those questions. So don't hesitate to reach out if anything else um, comes up during the time. But <clears throat> this is kind of going to be um, the general overview of what we're going to talk about. Uh, I'll talk really briefly about, you know, some planning information and tips for um, for classes and courses as you start to kind of explore some of our on um, online resources uh, to class, uh, plan classes. We'll talk a little bit about your pre-enrolled classes that you should be able to see on your eCampus placement exams, and um, of course, next steps, right? And I also have a few student resources uh, for you to explore, but you know, that's more um, so once we actually get to campus and things that you can explore once you get here. But yeah, with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. So first things first, right? You wanna make sure that you are registered for your advising and vet session. So um, my assumption is that you all have already registered for your session, but if you haven't, 
please reach out to our office as soon as possible and you know kind of get that on your calendar because that's going to be the main um, place where you will be officially enrolling into your classes. You would have already gotten information about completing the Camino course, which is going to be basically a detailed version of what I'm going to be talking with you about today. So it's going to involve a lot of information, tips, and resources on um, you know, how to understand the process of enrolling in cl into classes, um, understanding course avail, you know, things like that. And once you log into your eCampus account, which is where you will, again, officially enroll into classes, you want to make sure that you have taken care of any of the tasks that are going to pop up on the top left tile once you log into your eCampus, and that's going to be the tasks tab, right? And you will see this hold called online agreements hold, and you want to make sure, again, you take care of that because that actually will block you from registering for classes, so you want to make sure you get that cleared out before you um, come into our advising and red session sometime in July. <clears throat> so here's some general information, right? As you start to kind of look at your classes and course avail for um, upcoming schedules. Um, as you already know, we are on the quarter system. So we have three main quarters, fall, winter, and spring. And then, you know, the summer sessions, of course, are optional. Um, the minimum course load that you definitely have to be enrolled in to be an official student here at Santa Clara would be 12 units. So that's about three or so classes, but the typical course load that students usually take um, in their first year is about four classes, which would be about 16 um, units. Now, you will also see a few, you know, lower division classes, which would be anywhere from like one to 99 level, like an econ two or, you know, a, a child studies three. Um, but you'll also see some upper division classes anywhere from between 100 to 199, but that's something that you don't have to worry about right now. Um, you know, those are classes that you will take towards the end of your sophomore year, maybe beginning of sophomore year, but for now you want to focus on those lower division courses. And um, of course, to be able to graduate with a degree here at Santa Clara, you need 175 total units and about 60 um, of them um, should be upper division uh, units for you to be able to graduate with a degree. All righty. Now, this is information that you're going to see on course avail as you start to kind of play around with your schedules. R means Thursday on your class schedule. So you want to kind of make a note of that. So when you see like MWF, that would mean Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And those classes are typically an hour and five minutes. And then TR actually means Tuesday, Thursday, and those would be about um, an hour and 45 minutes. You want to kind of take note of that. You want to try and kind of balance out your schedule so that you don't have all of your classes on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or all of them on Tuesday, Thursday. You definitely want to spread it out a little bit, um, ideally. But, you know, here's some of the more common schedules we kind of see, which is like, you know, three Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then maybe one Tuesday, Thursday, or two and two, depending on kind of what classes are available. Now, once you log into your eCampus, you are going to look um, at some of the pre-enrolled classes that are already showing up in your schedule. These will be anywhere from either, either a critical thinking or writing course, um, a cultures and ideas, and a religion and or um, a religion, theology, and culture course. So um, you should be able to see about just one that's in there. And what will happen during our advising and red session is that um, we will kind of plan around this specific class that you have in your schedule to uh, to you know, build the other three classes around that. So just make note of that uh, when you start to plan. And um, if you are a business engineering or a STEM major student, um, then you will also have other specific classes that you will be required to enroll in. And that's something that we'll discuss more in our advising and reg session with your specific advisor. Um, and that's also something that you can start to kind of explore as you um, also look at our website and start planning. Now, if you are a special population, like if you're an honors program student or if you're a lead scholar, um, you'll again have a few specialized classes there too that you could potentially add. And you know, those specific programs will be in touch with you about getting those classes either enrolled onto your schedule or you will again be enrolled into them directly. If you're an athlete, um, something to take note of is that you will also be given a practice schedule. And those are auto auto populated or you know they've already been programmed into course avail so when you start building your tentative schedules on course avail you will be able to actually plug in your practice schedules right in there and um and then kind of build your schedule around that as well and that's something that you know again if we have time in the end you know maybe i'll i'll show but if not you know you can definitely go to course avail and kind of play around with those schedules on your own it's pretty cool 
Alrighty, so now moving on to placement exams, there's two important ones that you're going to have to start to look at as you start planning your time before you get to Santa Clara. One is your second language requirement. Um, now, something important to note is depending on your major or the school you, that you're in, your language requirements will be different. So if you are in the College of Arts and Sciences, you will need to complete a level three of the introductory language. If you are in the Levy School of Business, you will complete up to level two of the introductory language. And if you are an engineering student, you get to be exempt altogether. So, you know, for example, um, you take the placement test, let's say for Spanish and you get placed into Spanish two, let's say, and you are a child studies major, you will take then Spanish level two and then level three to be able to complete that requirement. If you take the placement exam and then you get placed into Spanish level 100, that's already above that, um, you know, level three of the introductory language. So all you'll have to do is just take that Spanish level 100 to complete that requirement and then move forward. So um, you can take the placement test online. Again, we'll be sending you all of this information. Um, so you will have that um, at some point, um, but you can take the placement exam online and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, if you are proficient in a language if you're bi or multilingual um, we do have proficiency tests available available in a selected number of languages on um, our campus and so that's something that you can also uh, consider taking to be able to just take the proficiency exam and then and then not have to take um, any language classes and if you are an international student you may be able to fulfill this requirement with your TOEFL IELTS or English or I think Duolingo scores are also accepted. I'm not sure, but um, you know, with those tests, you will be able to fulfill those requirements. Now for calculus, so calculus is another, those placement exams that you will have to take if your major requires calculus as a requirement, right? So you only need to take it if your major requires calculus. Um, and just note that this is a pretty serious exam and you get only one shot. So make sure that you're well prepared and um, that uh, you, you know what you're getting into as you take this exam, because depending on what your score is, you will get placed in the, into the appropriate class, which could be either Math 9, which is pre-calculus, plus the lab, or Calc 1, which is Math 11 or 30. <clears throat> so you'll have to take one of those options. And if you have any AP scores that you're hoping to bring in, you know, definitely you know, send them over in time uh, because they may be applicable and transferable. <clears throat> All right, so next steps so some of the things to kind of, you know, look out for make sure that you're checking your SU email because that is how you are going to be contacted before your advising and red session. Um, like I said before, you want to complete that online agreements hold so that you don't have any blocks when you are ready to enroll for classes. Make sure you complete that Camino course as well. And of course, confirm your advising and red session with our office so that you're ready to go. Um, the other things that you can start doing is review your core and major requirements. So you can go to our SU bulletin, which is basically your one stop shop to learn everything and anything you need to know about the different majors, the different classes that Santa Clara offers. You could also go to our advising page, uh, which will get you um, some of the checklists for um, our different majors that we offer. Right. And this is kind of how our website looks like. So if you go down to um, the student advising resources right over there um, you can click on that and then be able to access all the different major checklists that we have available for all the majors that we have at SEO and start to explore classes this is going to be the fun part right so you can go to course avail and just kind of start playing around with the different classes the different categories right for the SU core that you can begin to look at and some of the more ideal ones I guess I would recommend um, but you can start looking at our cultures and ideas one religion theology and culture one your art second language civic engagement diversity science tech and society and natural science so if you're interested in that second language um, requirement you know make sure that you are completing the placement exam uh, well in advance because it takes about two weeks so 14 days for the placement results to come in and so you want to make sure that you complete that well in advance if you want to be able to register for a language class during your advising and red session and of course if you're a business engineering or stem student there are some requirements that you are most likely gonna um, you have to satisfy or will i'm sorry will satisfy just automatically through your majors Oh, that's right. I preempted myself. If you need to take the second language exam, you want to do that either, you know, at least two weeks prior. Um, 
If your major has a calculus requirement and you do not have AP credit for it, you will need to take the CRE, as we called it, the Calculus Readiness Exam over the summer, and you can find that in your um, eCampus under Academics. <clears throat> On the left-hand side, you'll see a whole bunch of gray tabs. It'll be one of those tabs. Okay, and so what to expect during your session, right? So what's gonna happen in that Zoom room when you actually visit us? You will have one advisor who will be assigned to you and you know we'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to build your schedule and make sure that we answer and address any of the questions that you have regarding your schedule. You will probably have another student who will also be in that Zoom room and you know, we're gonna do our best to have you know, students of the same majors at least in there, or at least the same school. That way you can have a connection before you, um, you know, come to campus. But um, yeah, you know, the, the two or three of us will most likely work to build your schedule together and you know, make sure that you are successfully enrolled into your classes. And I, of course, can't say that enough. Take care of your um, online agreements whole because again, that will block you from registration. And when, a, when you sign in to your Zoom room, make sure that you have these already open onto your browser, right? So log into your eCampus, make sure you have that ready because that's where you'll officially enroll into classes. Have course avail open on your browser because that's where we'll look for classes. So that's where we'll build a tentative schedule and you know explore all the available classes that are out there. And then of course, save your major checklist on your desktop so that you can refer to that if there's any classes that you kind of want to look at. And um, according to FERPA, privacy policies and acts, um, you want to be alone in the in, in your Zoom room, right, to make sure that you don't have any parents, guardians, friends um, around uh, because that does become a privacy issue. So we just want you in that Zoom room with us. And in summary, all I want to say is I know this can be a stressful process, um, you know, and but at the same time, it's super exciting because you get to pick your classes and you get to um, you know, build your very first schedule here at Santa Clara, but don't worry, it might seem really crazy and really chaotic, but you will get into the classes that you need, even though they may not be your first choice as a first year, but you will definitely get into the classes that you need to, to be able to graduate on time. Um, make sure that you have some backups ready, and this is something that the advisors will also help you out with. We'll have a good amount of time um, to be able to kind of plan your ideal schedule, but then also have some classes um, you know, as backups so that in case something gets filled up, you know, we have another option to go for. And try to be as patient as possible and as prepared as possible. The more prepared you are, um, the, 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 the better, you know, the more smoother our advising and reg process will go because time will be limited during that one hour that we have together. And finally, get excited to come to Santa Clara in the fall. I mean, I know we're going to be doing this online, but you know, hopefully we'll be able to see you in person and also see you in our office in person very, very soon. So, and finally, I just have a few slides here. Again, you'll be getting this information, so don't worry about it. Um, I've just added a few campus resources. Here's some videos, you know, that um, hopefully you can watch and um, of course if you need any additional advising help um, and support you can come to the drama center set up an appointment with any of us at the drama center and you can also reach out to your faculty advisors this is after you come onto campus in the fall so thank you all for listening and I'm sure we have questions Garrison did you want to maybe address some of the big questions that we got there <clears throat> Absolutely. There's a lot of them, everybody, and I appreciate them trying to get through as many as I can. Um, some general kind of themes maybe that I'd like to just point out. Um, there's some questions about pre-enrollment and what term you're registering for. So in the summer, when you meet with us, we're only registering for fall quarter. So that's the only set of classes you'll be enrolling in at this point. The rest of them you'll register for at various points throughout the academic year. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind is that if there are two courses, C and, um, CTW and CNI, that are conducted over two terms. So if you are enrolled or if you're pre-enrolled or if you end up enrolling on your own in either one of those, that second half of that class will automatically be on your schedule in a future quarter. But other than that, everything else um, that you register for, you will register on your own. Um, lots of questions about the language requirement um, and just some general themes again is that you have to complete at or above the level that is required of your major. Only your major dictates the language requirement. If you have a minor, that doesn't impact core requirements. The major dictates the core requirements. Um, and I'm just starting to get to some of the questions about the advising and enrollment sessions. I think we just touched on some of this, but 
you will get an email approximately a week in advance of your advising and enrollment session. And that will give the specific time and details of that session. So if you've already signed up and you know you're going to be on July, whatever, uh, you'll get an email from our office approximately a week in advance of that with that information. So I think those are so far kind of some general themes. We'll keep um, we'll keep an eye here on the Q&A and when we come back as a group, we can answer some more questions later. There are a few that I do want to address because there are many of those. Um, there's a lot of, is this advising appointment in person or is it online? They are all conducted on Zoom. So mm -hmm. all of you will be meeting with your advisor remotely. Mm -hmm. So in that email that you receive, not only will it give the time and details, it'll give the Zoom link and the advisor's name. And then you will simply arrive at the Zoom link at that specific time. And how, where do they see that they've registered for their academic advising session? You don't see that because you've already signed up. So that you'll see that when you get the email from us. So if you're not sure and you're trying to confirm, um, I can put in the chat um, the Drummond Center email. Um, and so probably the easiest thing to do is if you're not sure and you want somebody to double check um, what day, uh, you can email the Drummond Center directly and someone can look that up for you. Again, all we'll be able to tell you at this point is the day. We don't know the specific time yet. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're uncertain of which session you signed up for, you just email the Drummond Center. Oops, and I just put the wrong email. Sorry about that. And then um, I'd be too fast. Ignore what I just wrote, everybody. The second email is going to be the correct one. And then when are they um, given the time? How how um, how much before? Approximately a week. Okay, so a week. Approximately, it depends on the session. So you know, it, some of them are like more like eight or nine days, but um, about a week in advance is when you'll get that email. So if you're going to session one, uh, you probably already have that email by now. All right, perfect. Um, we will we'll have a Q and A session at the end, everybody, and then they'll also jump in on the Q and A. So they'll help answer questions as we transition to the next office. Just know that we are um, being cognizant of time and like make sure to answer as many questions as possible. Um, but I'll go ahead and introduce um, our orientation office. And as a reminder, if you can send the questions in the Q&A, it's, it's easier for us to manage um, than to scroll between the two places to make sure we get your questions answered. Um, but I'll go ahead and introduce um, Cam. Can you go first? All right, so thank you for joining. Uh, we have a little presentation for y'all and uh, and like we said, we got plenty of time for answers at the end, but also uh, if you have questions, you can communicate with us through uh, a lot of uh, different methods. Uh, first off, email is what we get back to fastest. If you have uh, any questions about the university or any general questions, orientation at SCU, edu is our email. We also have our phone number um, that is on the on the right side. Uh, but uh, just know that uh, I'm a one man show in the office of the Locatelli Center in the Center uh, for Student Involvement over the summer uh, on campus. So it takes a little bit longer to get uh, to us. But also we want you to connect in different ways with us uh, on uh, on Instagram. We have. Uh, at SCU orientation and also our Santa Clara orientation leader diaries. So, uh, so we have great information on both of those and, uh, and on the latter one, our OLs really take the show and show their experiences around campus, but also uh, uh, give you an insight into uh, how they uh, navigate as college students. Um, also, we have our website, uh, scu.edu slash orientation, has all of our updated information. As we get information from the school, we update it uh, within uh, this website. So we'll, we will keep referring to this website as we move forward. But most importantly, we have Bronco Exchange. And this is for uh, the students, uh, for all you students here that are listening. Bronco Exchange is the piece that we're going to talk about uh, the most uh, today, uh, but um, so keep that in mind. Um, so uh, moving forward, so I want you to know that we are real people in the Center for Student Involvement and uh, real people are answering and talking to you. So this is our staff that's behind the scenes answering emails and phone calls and Kind of working the programming together, but the the 
real faces of the show and the people that steal the show and the people that uh, we love working with are our orientation staff. So, um, so we have from, uh, from my student assistants, Alex and Nat, that will be here to help answer some questions in the chat. But uh, Jaden, Olivia, and Taylor are about to take the show, who are our leadership team and returning orientation leaders. But also, we have a wonderful staff of 15 new orientation leaders that are really excited to help uh, get you connected to the university and, uh, and just uh, make sure that uh, we are building community and meeting new people and having fun while we're doing it this summer. Um, so with that, I want to start off with parents. I know there are a lot of parents, uh, there are a lot of families in here. So I want to start off with y'all so we can get into the students. So uh, with parent engagement, we uh, we have some websites on here. If you'd like to take a screenshot, uh, Nat uh, will also add them in the in the chat uh, for, uh, for reference. Um, but uh, we will be having parent webinars throughout all of uh, July and August. Uh, usually we offer them at different times of uh, the day and different times of the week, each topic, so that we can try to work around y'all's schedules as much as possible. Uh, we, uh, as you can see, we have, uh, we have a lot of topics that we, we collaborate with uh, different departments and offices at our school to have presentations and information sessions, but also we record these and we put them on our YouTube channel. So uh, we hope that you connect with us on our YouTube channel, uh, SCU New Student and Parent Programs, because we will be updating that as we move forward. Uh, but also uh, we send uh, emails uh, through our Bronco Prep Guide. Uh, and, um, and with this, uh, most of y'all are receiving those emails right now, but if not, uh, you can always access our archives, but also sign up for the list at scu.edu slash orientation slash guides. It's up here on the screen, uh, but also you can email us at orientation at scu.edu and we'd happy to get you signed up and make sure you're connected uh, with this. Uh, so up next, uh, we are going to talk about Bronco Exchange. This is uh, for all the students. Uh, out of all the things that we do this summer, this is what we want you to get engaged with. And we want you to get engaged so bad that I'm going to step out of the way and stop talking so you can uh, hear from Taylor, Jaden, and Olivia. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Jaden Raimundo. I'm a rising junior, marketing major, business analytics and retail studies minor. Um, I use he, him pronouns, and I am from the LA area. So um, we're just going to be talking a little bit about Bronco Exchange and what exactly that is. So I'm just going to give a general overview. Bronco Exchange is the centralized platform that we're going to be using for all things orientation throughout the summer. Um, it's basically a way for any of the incoming students and transfer students to get connected with each other and the orientation leaders. And the main way that's gonna happen is through the events that uh, the orientation leaders are gonna be hosting throughout the summer, which we will talk about that and along with all the other um, features that Bronco Exchange has in the next slides. So yeah, um, can I go to the next slide, thank you. Um, so one of the first features that we're going to talk about is messaging on Bronco Exchange. So some things that you can do is you can message. You not only can you message the orientation leaders if you ever have any questions about literally anything, we're here for you. We can answer questions about um, like classes, uh, activities on campus, or any concerns that you have. Literally anything at all, we can answer them. You can message us on Bronco Exchange, and we're fairly easy to find. Um, there's an orientation leader tab, and you just click on us click on it, and then you can chat to any one of us. You can also message any of the incoming students. Um, a lot of, when, when you set up uh, your Bronco Exchange profile, part of it is you set up some things that you're interested in and also where you're from. So if you see, like I'm from LA, so if I was an incoming student and I saw that another student was from LA, I might want to message them. So that's just another feature that we have in Bronco Exchange.
All right, so my name is Taylor. I'm a rising senior at San Jose University, double majoring in marketing and psychology. And this is my second year with the orientation program. And so just kind of um, piggybacking off of what Jaden said earlier, on the Bronco Exchange platform, there is a tab called resources. And so just as everyone is asking about um, classes, course availability, or just maybe like different departments within Santa Clara University, Bronco Exchange has um, these easy links that y'all can click on just so um, it'll take you directly to the website. So if there's ever anything that we mention within um, our events or that y'all hear in your emails, if y'all need an easy access, like sort of hub um, for these different links, y'all can use Bronco Exchange and just click on the different programs and it'll take you directly to the website that correlates to the specific, the specific department. Hi everyone, I am Olivia. I am a rising fourth year, double majoring in accounting information systems, as well as communication. And I'll be talking about the Bronco Exchange events. So the Bronco Exchange events are virtual events we'll be hosting throughout the summer. They consist of informational sessions, social events, panels, et cetera, you name it. And um, basically with these events, we're just trying to um, allow the students, the incoming students to engage and connect with the community as much as possible before um, joining us in the fall. And so you'll be able to interact with other incoming students, us orientation leaders, learn more, to, more about different organizations and resources on campus. So that way you feel more connected with the community before you even you know, join us and become a Bronco in the fall. So that's basically the gist of it. And we also just wanna make sure or to let y'all know that we encourage you to reach out as much as possible. So like Jaden was talking about with messaging, you can reach us, um, on Bronco Exchange if you want to message us there, but we also have other contact points if you have like suggestions for events, things you want to see, or just general questions. We're more than happy to answer those all the time. Um, so you might be wondering why Bronco Exchange, why are we using this platform, why are we doing it like this? Um, for me personally, I'll talk about my experience. When I was a uh, incoming first year coming in, uh, I don't know about y'all, but uh, from my high school, or no one from my high school was coming to SU, so I was obviously a little scared, a little nervous. I had about a thousand and a half questions that I didn't know the answer to, and I was just overall very nervous if I was going to make any friends or anything like that. Um, when I came on to the Bronco Exchange platform, I, I just checked it out just to see like what exactly these events were, and once I picked, went to one of them, I immediately realized um, like that I wanted to go to all of them, and which I, I did. You'll have to do what I did. I went to a lot of the events, but that's not something you have to do. But I did because I really enjoyed the community that I found there. I It really eased into my college ex experience and made it easier because when I then came onto campus later on, I knew that I would have friends. I Some of my closest friends I actually met through Bronco Exchange and through the events that we do. And I was also able to ultimately get all the questions that I had answered uh, that or rather the questions that um, I had, because like I said, I had about a million that I'm sure all of you do too. Um, so that's that's my experience through Bronco Exchange. And apparently I liked it enough to come back, not one, but two years as an orientation leader. So it's, my experience is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so kind of just piggybacking again um, off of what Jaden was saying, my orientation experience was a lot different from um, Jaden as well as all the other incoming students for this year, um, just because we did have an in-person experience at the time. Um, but just kind of some improvements that I've seen over the years was that like with the online format, it is very accessible to a lot of the students that are coming in. So while there was like a lot of boundaries or maybe some hesitations with an in-person experience, especially with COVID and with the pandemic, the online experience just makes it so that everyone who wants to join can join. Um, and with the online experience, we've also had a lot more opportunities to partner with different departments on campus. And so kind of just going into my first year, I honestly didn't necessarily feel prepared um, just for what the school year had in toll. I didn't necessarily know about different resources like the Drama Center or about like the Multicultural Center, which is one of the resources on campus that has been most profound in my experience. Um, but I think with this past school year and or like past summer and is with this coming summer, what we're really trying to accomplish is just making a really welcoming environment for the incoming students that educates people about different resources, as well as provides an opportunity for the incoming students to get to know each other better and just kind of amplify their SU experience before even coming on campus.
Yeah, and I don't have much to add on that because Taylor and I had very similar experiences, but just to reiterate, like with having the online virtual sessions, you're really getting a lot of opportunities to learn a lot about the Santa Clara community and meet a ton of different people. Um, Taylor and I had an in-person experience, which was fun, I can tell you that, but like I didn't get to engage as many times with other students as much as I wanted to. So I think this mm -hmm. format's really great. I think you'll really enjoy it. So go ahead and sign up if you're not already signed up, but yeah. And hi everyone, my name is Haidea. I'm a rising sophomore majoring in psychology and public health and I use she, her pronouns. And I love Bronco Exchange because it really just gave me a community before I even stepped on campus. And originally when I thought about college, especially from a high school standpoint, I thought like orientation would only deal with registering for classes or you know figuring out like what building is what building but what I really liked was that the orientation leaders really put a lot of care and consideration into each event because not only were some events like informational such as like info on residence halls or what places you can eat on campus or good food places off campus but it also a lot of events were interest-based so I was able to register and pick events that I found um, interesting and things that I wanted to meet. And that also allowed me to meet people who are also interested in some of those events. So for instance, there was like a music social on like Olivia Rodrigo. There was talking about Disney shows and then a Roblox event. And having like moments like that and finding a like-minded community really helped me transition from high school to college, especially when my junior year was cut short from COVID. And so what I really love the most about Bronco Exchange is that that community you build from this online community really lasts when you transition to the in-person community. And many of the people that I met during my time last summer um, via Bronco Exchange through orientation, I'm still friends with today. And I think that part is the most rewarding aspect as I serve as an orientation leader this summer and host my own events for incoming students. Awesome. Thank you all so much for sharing. And I want to talk about some upcoming events. So we are we hope that you start getting engaged with Bronco Exchange now and uh, and start uh, connecting and uh, getting to know us, but starting to get to know uh, your classmates as well. We are going to start events on July 7th and go all the way through the end of August. And one of the great things is that we can offer a lot of events and spread them out over uh, over a two month span. Now, with that said, we want to get to know y'all and make sure that we are uh, we are tailoring our events to y'all. So we are starting with uh, with just social events, and these are just some of the ones that we are offering in the first week where we are starting with programming. Last year, we offered over 250 events. Uh, we don't look for uh, 100 to 150 uh, people gathering together. We look for those just 10 to 15 small groups where we can chat. One of the great things about this is uh, it's optional. So uh, you can join in and join an event when you want to and you have time and you just want to hang out or, uh, or if um, or if you want to get to know a little bit more about the university, but you don't have to. It's go at your own pace. But we have all of these events over the summer, and we're going to continue to populate as we move on throughout the weeks and as we get to know you. So we know what uh, what all of you like and what all of you want to connect on, and whether that's a very niche event or where it's whether it's very popular. Um, there are some times where niche events become very popular. We're releasing a season two of Late Night with Taylor and Olivia, or After Hours with Taylor and Olivia, where they talk about, I, I have no idea, but it was popular. Um, so, uh, so we have a little bit of everything for everybody. Uh, we're starting in that first week with just social events, but uh, rest assured, as we move on, we have plans to release informational sessions. So sessions on departments and, uh, and other offices and uh, recordings on our YouTube so we can catch you up and, uh, and let you learn at your own pace. Uh, but also we're gonna have a series to get you connected with uh, other organizations on campus. Our store, chartered student organizations 
our registered student organizations, our time to have discussions on diversity and inclusion, and what it means to be a Bronco. So we are going to be offering all of this as, as we go through uh, the weeks of July. So uh, parents, if you're in here and your parent and your students say, well, they're just not offering uh, anything to us, uh, let me be the first to tell you, they are lying to you. Um, but uh, encourage uh, your students to get involved. But uh, students, we want you to come hang out with us. We, uh, we know that, uh, we know that jumping in uh, can be a little intimidating. We're asking you to come to one event, and uh, and we guarantee you won't uh, you won't regret it. Uh, we'll have a good time. We'll get connected. We'll talk about things about the university, but also things that have nothing to do with the university. Because when we're building community, not everything has to be about the uh, about the university and about learning about the school. It's about being college students and connecting with people that uh, help us and motivate us to be successful moving forward over these next four years, but also uh, over a lifetime because we're all going to college uh, to get uh, to get that uh, big, um, big paycheck one of these days. So, uh, so we hope that you get involved and, uh, and we really want to see you there. Uh, of course, we have some other things that I want to say are not as important as Bronco Exchange right now and not as important as advising and registration. Those are the two things that we really want you to focus on right now. When the time comes, we do have learning modules that are uh, kind of uh, uh, at your own pace over the summer, learning about the different resources so we uh, we can get you acclimated and connected in different ways. Uh, we also have uh, a hybrid becoming a being a Bronco series that uh, that uh, we might have one or two uh, modules released over the summer, and then it'll go into uh, into uh, your first year at SCU, whether you're uh, a new first year student or a new transfer student. Uh, that uh, that series will uh, continue in person. Of course, we will email you uh, at your uh, SCU account when these uh, things become a release and make sure that you know about them and that you have uh, time to complete them. But right now we want you to focus on uh, advising and registration and uh, Bronco Exchange and getting connected with our community. Um, so also, I know a lot of people have questions. Well, when are we moving in? When, when do we need to plan to get up to, uh, to SCU and, and start, the, start the fall quarter? So uh, we have a couple dates that uh, you can move in. So uh, you can move in as early as Thursday, September 15th. We also have options to move in from the 16th through the 18th. Now for parents, we do have, we will offer some programming on the 15th and 16th, but I also want to include that anything that we do on the 15th or 16th is also going to be included in Welcome Weekend on the 17th and 18th. So nothing that we do on the 15th and 16th that's going to be exclusive to individuals that uh, may wait till the weekend to move in. But you can move in as early as the 15th. Um, the 16th on that Friday, uh, you can also move in and get settled in if you need some extra time. But the 17th uh, as well uh, will be a move in date. And that's when we'll start our programming for Welcome Weekend, which will have resource fairs and vendor fairs from, uh, from companies uh, around the community that can be helpful in, uh, in getting your residence hall uh, uh, um, decorated, but also those uh, those basic essentials uh, in in opening uh, opening checking accounts are uh, just some of those things that you forgot uh, to bring when you moved up. Um, we will have those on campus in our vendor fair. We'll also have uh, some events, uh, some traditional events like our president's welcome. Uh, we'll have. Uh, We'll have some uh, some receptions at the end of the day. We'll have our student organizations that are here on campus programming for uh, students that weekend. 
Uh, and then we'll also have a farewell ceremony uh, once we get to that uh, Sunday, September 18th. Now, all of this, just like everything during these past two years, it's always updated. So, uh, so we've put our website up here and we'll put it in the chat as well. As we, uh, as we learn more, you will learn more. So as we start to get the schedule figured out and confirmed, we will start, uh, we will start letting you know. But these are the basics that, uh, that you can count on. Uh, but more importantly, when you have questions, contact us in any way, we, we will respond. So uh, we, have, uh, we have TikTok, we have YouTube, we have, our, we have our email account, we have Instagram. Uh, we, we answer on all of these and we try to, and as we move forward, we will get more and more active as we, uh, as we wrap up our orientation leader training and really start to dive in and uh, get to know all of you over the summer. So we are, we are so, so excited that, uh, that it is finally uh, July and that we get to start uh, getting connected with all of you. And, and we really hope that you reach out uh, when you need something or when you don't need something and just wanna hang out. Uh, we're here, we're pretty fun people. Uh, so thank you so much. And, uh, and I'll step out of the way for the Q&A. All right, thank you. Um, lots of questions in the Q&A. I'm gonna go through like what the common themes were. Um, this one's for Drummond. Where can they sign or at least see their online agreements hold? Um, that has been a big question. Yeah, so that's located on eCampus, which um, you should hopefully have received the technology training Camino course, and that's also going to introduce you to eCampus. Uh, once you get in there, uh, you can go to your student center and view holds, and you'll be able to find it. It's a very short process. It literally only takes a couple of minutes. So all you need to do is go in, review the agreement, uh, accept it, and that's all it takes. But you do need to have it completed in order to enroll in classes. So it's really important to have it done before you arrive at your advising session. Um, if you, I, I have the link somewhere, I can find it, but if you have the link, um, if you can send the link to that Camino, I'm imagining in my head, um, course or where they can find that information, I think that would be helpful. Um, a common question too, also in the Q and A, is if parents sign um, or if the students sign the FERPA agreement, can parents join the advising session? Parents are welcome to join advising sessions in the future with a FERPA agreement, meaning after this initial enrollment session. If you have a FERPA and you, your parents want to join you for future advising meetings with our office, but during this initial session in July, we ask that only students attend specifically for privacy because there's other students potentially in the group with you. So we ask that for the July session that only be students in attendance. Okay. And then um, a question that I saw too is in that session, will they actually be registering for courses or just going over like general guidance and advice? You will be registering on your way to being full-fledged Broncos by the end of that 45 minutes or hour. So um, that's the whole intent of the session is that you'll come in uh, you will meet with the advisor. The advisor is going to be there to help you all the way through the process. So they're going to walk you through each step. Again, the more prepared you can come, the better. So if you have ideas in advance, that will certainly help your advisor. Uh, but regardless, they'll be there to help you. They'll be there to walk you through enrollment, registration. And when you're done with the session, you will have a full schedule of classes. I'll add to this too, because I have seen this question, um, which maybe you're about to ask me, but I'll get ahead of it. Uh, people have been asking questions about, well, what if my session is later in the summer? What if I'm registering in August? Will there still be classes? We do hold classes for each session. So we space out enrollment amongst all of the various sessions throughout the summer. So even if you're in, going to a later session, we will be reserving classes for each one. So we, we know you're coming uh, and we are prepared for you whenever you arrive for your session. Perfect. Um, and then can you um, restate the deadline for the CRE, again, calculus readiness exam, um, what that deadline is for students? Um, that's a good question with the deadline. Gunjan, do you have a deadline on that? I mean, really, the deadline is now. I don't know if there's a deadline where it actually gets <laughs> Yeah, covered. there isn't really like a hard deadline. Um, but, you know, if, if, if you require the, the calculus readiness exam for your major, then I would strongly recommend that you complete it before your advising and reg session. 
Um, but if you're in a situation where you've taken, you know, AP Calc and you're waiting for your scores, then then just wait and then let your advisor know during your session um, that we will just, you know, temporarily add you or enroll you into like a Calc 1 um, or Math 9, you know, whichever is available. And then once your scores come in and any changes that need to be made, we will enroll you into the appropriate course at that time. Thank you. Yeah, there's been a lot of questions too about the AP exams and that type of thing. It's it's likely your AP scores won't be posted anywhere officially when you arrive for advising and enrollment. So it's really important that you come prepared to share with your advisor any AP scores that or any AP uh, tests that you took, because we can look up that information. So as long as you know your scores, we can get a sense of what you will get credit for. But it's most likely not officially on your transcript yet. And so it's really important that you tell your advisor that in advance, so we don't put you back in those same classes. As long as we know you're gonna get credit, we'll schedule accordingly. Uh, I know there's also been questions too about this summer and folks asking questions about, well, what if I take summer classes now? That is still an option. You can still transfer in credits um, that you're taking prior to your initial enrollment. Though if they're being taken at other schools, you just need to work with the registrar's office and again, let your advisor know. I do wanna make it clear though, once you do enroll at Santa Clara, that option is no longer available. So after your initial enrollment here, you're no longer uh, eligible to take any requirements at other schools, like in the summer. So this would be the only opportunity if you're doing that. Um, there are, I know some questions in the chat of that they won't get their scores until after the advising session. Is there a way that they can and they, they get a score to get out of a class that they're already registered, how would they go about contacting the office or how would you advise? Uh, we're probably gonna have to deal with this kind of case by case. So again, letting your advisor know is gonna be the best option. Uh, and we can kind of talk it through with you, kind of get a sense of you know, what the test was, kind of how you felt about it, and then to make some determinations. In some cases, there, there's probably potential that there are classes you don't have to take in the fall and we can just wait on that until we know. And that would certainly be the preferred route if it's a scenario where the class is required in the fall and we still don't know the score and it could change, uh, your advisor can work with you. There are ways if we had to, uh, to make changes later in the summer if things change based on what you think is gonna happen. But again, the, the easy answer to all this is always tell your advisor at the, at the session. That's why your advisor's there. They're definitely prepared to, to help with all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, and then, a few questions on, is there absolutely a, no reason for them to um, be able to retest on the CRE? Yes, more or less. I mean, yeah, if you've already taken the CRE, then, then they're gonna hold you to that score. Um, so yes. Okay. Um, there's a follow-up is like, what if they didn't get a reasonable score? Would they be put in pre-calc or um, what would, you be advising um, or advice for that? Well, I mean, we hold to the whatever the CRE score indicates. So whichever, wherever you place is where you will be spotted. I mean, the CRE is a really accurate exam. A lot of a lot of schools utilize it. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're pretty confident that where you score will place you into the appropriate level from there. Another question on where exactly on eCampus is the agreement hold? Um, I want to say, I don't know if you know yeah, that. Yeah, that. Good. Is it Student Center? Uh, yeah, no. So if, if you if you if you log into your eCampus, right on the first page, you'll see all the different tiles, and then on the top left, you'll see the Tasks tile. That's where you want to click, and and you'll be able to see that online agreements. And then you just basically read through, um, go ahead and hit Next, and then Next, Next, and then Submit, and then you should be able to get that whole period. Perfect. Um, a few questions on how early they can change their major, what the changing their major process is like. Um, also, as a reminder, just be mindful of time. Um, you can change major at various times throughout your experience. So it just kind of depends on what you're, what you're thinking. Um, you won't be able to do it until the fall. So if you're trying to change your major over the summer, the best bet, again, uh, kind of brokers, let your advisor know. They, just because you're declared one thing doesn't mean we can't advise you into a different route if you're already planning on going a different direction. So in the fall is when you have the opportunity to change majors. There could be there could be other layers depending on if the major has other requirements to transfer, but it would happen in the fall officially, unofficially, let your advisor know if you don't wanna pursue that major this summer. 
A few questions on when, where they find the FERPA agreement. I think that's eCampus as well, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Um, let's see. Uh, how would you advise um, students that are undecided, especially as they go into their advising appointments? I would say they're in a great space because really the way that our curriculum works is most of the first year is exploration. It's meeting basic core requirements. So coming in undeclared puts you in a really good spot. You're not, you're not in any kind of being behind at all. You're going to work on general core and it'll give you opportunities to explore a lot of different avenues. So come prepared with some ideas. That's always good. Uh, but I think it's a really good space in the first year here. Awesome. Um, what does the being a Bronco series look like? Can you give a quick overview of that? Yeah, so they are in the works of uh, of redoing this. Uh, in in the past, they've had some uh, some diversity and inclusion modules that are view and complete at your own pace over the summer, and then uh, during the fall quarter, there are a lot of uh, small and large group sessions around diversity and inclusion, uh, health and wellness, uh, just self care and well-being. Uh, now uh, we are looking at different things now that we are uh, hopefully on the tail end of the pandemic and more information is going to be released about this uh, towards the end of July. So hang tight with us. We will, uh, we will uh, get back with you once the Office of Student Life has confirmed some things. Uh, at, the, at the same time, it, this program is built to uh, and have us learn a little bit about each other and have us learn a bit about ourselves so we can lean on each other but uh, be uh, be decent uh, human beings to each other um, and uh, treat each other with respect and dignity. So uh, it's to help us learn about others but also learn about ourselves. Thank you. Uh, a few questions on the language um, proficiency exam. What, how are, how is it exam structured? Uh, like, is it multiple choice? Is it reading? Like, is there someone, you know, a recording or how is that structured? I, I can answer that. Um, so, so the language placement exam um, is, is, it's a very dynamic exam. So what it's going to do is it kind of like the SAT, I suppose, you know, so based on your responses, it's going to kind of um, ask you follow up questions, you know, to kind of, to, to, to basically test your your proficiency or, and your comfort with the exam. And um, uh, I think it would be a combination of uh, multiple choice questions, although I'm not, don't quote me on that, I'm not entirely sure, but um, it will have a series of questions that Tests you on, you know, your reading, um, comprehension, listening, and speaking skills, and so with a combination of that, it will be able to then determine at the end um, what language level uh, you will be most uh, ideally placed at to move forward from. Okay. Um, there's a question on if if they have five hundred four accommodations, does that also apply? to like placement exams? How does that work? I am not sure about that, Garrison. Do you, do you have any? Yeah, likewise, I'm trying to think that one. I, it depends, I think, a little bit. I'm not 100% clear. Most of the time, um, I'm not, I don't think you do utilize them for placement. Those typically come into play after you're enrolled. Uh, but to clarify that, you could always reach out to Office of Accessible Education which is the office that oversees all of those pieces. Um, but my general understanding is I don't think those come into play until after enrollment. Uh, but again, that would that would be officially answered by their office. Their email is OAE for the Office of Accessible Education at scu.edu. And you will need to do paperwork and every, your 504 doesn't automatically come over. You, there's, you have to initiate a, a, a process to make sure that uh, and then you have a meeting with that office. So you will have to set up um, um, and let them know that you have accommodations. Um, you have a 504, 504, and then they'll let you know what that looks like in college because it is different. It's not an automatic, you get the same in college. Um, and especially if you're coming from out of state, there's 
um, different legal things in California um, accommodation wise. So um, you'll have to meet with them and chat with them about that. But their office um, is wonderful and their website is also really helpful in terms of what accommodations are typical for students. Um, so you can see how that guides you. Um, so far we have answered about 130 questions. So lots and more even through the chat. So I'm just letting you guys know, we are at time. Um, we can stick around for a few more questions. I don't know, I wanna check with the other offices if that's okay with you. Um, there will always, you guys will always have more questions. So even if we stood and wait, answered every single one, you'd email us later saying, I forgot this. Um, so questions will come up, which is totally fine. And that's why we'll send the recording and we'll send contact information for these offices. Um, but just as a reminder that both of these offices are in the, the highest peak of um, their year in their work. So they're dealing with a lot of volume and questions. So, you know, please be patient as you, you know, call and as you email, um, as they get back to you all. But um, can you talk a little bit about what the co-op experience is? I think they're seeing it in the classes, like the course of Uh I mean, the co-op is a generally affiliated with the engineering program. Um, I don't know. I don't have a lot of details on that. It's not something you would typically do in your first year. It's more of a something you would do later on in the program, which is more connected with doing an outside, uh, working with a company or something along those lines. Um, so depending on the co-op you're talking about, it would probably be helpful that we get you connected with that department eventually to get a little more clarification on what you're looking to do. Um, after they take the CRE, do they get an email saying their score and what they should be placed in? They do. Um, they will receive um, their placement within two weeks, I believe. If I'm not wrong, Garrison, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's within the two weeks. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, and you know, I, I I am seeing you know a few questions about like oh if I'm a few points off, you know what does that mean? So there is definitely like a, like a range, right? So if you are in, um, I believe it's like anywhere from like zero to seven. Five, um, you know that's where you know the recommend. I'm sorry, no, I, I could be wrong about this. Um, but just to speak in gross generalities, you know there are a few kind of like you know markers where you have to hit to be able to, uh, and I believe there's a score of 76 or higher where you will get placed into Calc One, um, and then anything below that, you know there are a few ranges. So what that would mean is that if you are kind of close to the mark, I believe that Mary Long. Um, will offer you the opportunity to you know maybe take a few more like practice assessment tests in um, Alex, which is you know the system that you take the test in and potentially redo the exam, but I think that it's 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 just like a very small kind of window there that you have so definitely reach out to Dr Mary along about that if you are just kind of like a point or two um, you know in that range. Um, but, but yes, I mean, if you've specifically gotten that recommendation of, okay, you need to be enrolled in Math 9 along with the lab, then we would highly recommend that you take that class just to also build a good foundation moving forward. Another good resource, again, on our Camino page, if you go to the Camino page, there's a section on the CRE, and there's actually a, a chart that it gives all the numbers that uh, Gunjun was just talking about. So it actually tells you exactly based on your score where you are. And it even gives that criteria for when to contact uh, Professor Long. So I would really encourage you if you have all these questions uh, to really go to that Camino page and, and review all of it because it, it has a lot of really helpful information. It's got a great video on there that uh, one of the math department faculty put together. It's really thorough, it's really comprehensive and it, it answers probably almost all the questions you might have about the CRE on that video. Perfect. Um, there are a few questions on um, on eCampus. It says like no current tasks. Is there any way that they can find out if they've taken care of the online agreement hold? Would it just be reaching out or is there another way to do that? I, I would just keep checking eCampus every now and then, you know, between now and your advising and red session. Uh, most students should have that hold on there, but if you haven't already completed something like that in the past few weeks, then you know it probably just hasn't been placed yet. 
Uh, but it will at some point. And so I would recommend just keep checking your eCampus every now and then to make sure that you have that clear. You just need to have it clear before your advising and reg session. So you have a little bit of time to do that. Um, there's a few questions that, that I can answer about how do we know if the, uh, the school has received their transcripts, like college transcript or like dual enrollment credit, community college or AP scores. You still send that to admissions and then um, once we process it, then like the registrar academic advising has um, access to it. There's some processing time, but you'd, you'd send it to us. So the email would be app status, the abbreviation for application app status at scu.edu um, is where you would send those documents. You can uh, also check to see if we receive them there, or you can email admissions at scu.edu. Um, and we can take a look and, see, and look into your file to see if we've received it. We will need your official um, transcripts from the um, crediting institution. If it's on your high school transcript, um, we will we will need the official one from whatever institution that you get it from. Some high schools combine them, um, which is fine when we're reviewing, but in terms of processing credit, we'll need that transcript separate. So that's how that works. Um, there, um, there's a few questions on the like, when academic advisors will be assigned. Um, I think you're just giving a day and time, and then in that meeting is when you find out who, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. You'll in that email that comes out the week prior, it'll have all that information. So it'll mention it'll give the time, the advisor, uh, the Zoom link, everything you need to know for the session. Um, so you'll now that's not your permanent advisor. That's just the advisor who will assist you this summer. So you'll actually get assigned an advisor based on your major when you arrive on campus, and you'll have access to the drama center as well. So. The advisor this summer is, is solely there to assist with fall term enrollment. Certainly you can continue to meet with them if you have a good experience, but that's their main purpose in the summer. Perfect. Um, and as a reminder, the session will be is recorded. Um, we'll send slide decks out and everything. It'll take us about a week to process everything from both sessions of yesterday and today's. Um, but you will all receive it, all incoming first year students um, will also do a parent email as well, so they'll have access to it. And we're building a web page so we can post all the different um, information and link to the different websites um, there. Uh, let's see. For, for questions that they have, I, I see just a lot of specific situations. Um, for those who have questions like that, is it best for them to hold on to them until their advising session, especially since some of them are, are later? Um, or do do they give a call to your office or send an email? Um, and you know, because it's a lot of questions are you know just some angst to making sure that they're going to be in a good place. But um, how can they um, just check to see if it's something that they can wait on or if it's something that they um, can reach out already on? Well, I would say in terms of the question about just making sure they're in a good space. Um, if you're in the chat right now, you're in a good space. We know you're coming. We're going to take really good care of you. Regardless of when your session is, uh, we will make sure you leave with a good schedule. You know, we're on top of all that. So any of those questions, I just encourage you to just wait until your advising session and everything should go smoothly. If you do have like specific questions or things that you need clarification on in advance, you're always welcome to email the office um, and we can try to answer it that way, uh, especially if they're really basic, uh, you know, when's my session, that type of thing. So you can always shoot an email to the office if you do have questions. But generally speaking, your first opportunity to, to meet with someone will be that session in July or August, depending on when it is. Okay. Um, any last um, just reminders as for those getting ready for their advising session or as they look to Bronco Exchange at different events, any last minute, um, just making sure they have everything in order? When in doubt, reach out to us and ask questions. Uh, I know that there's a, there's a lot to go, to go through and there's a lot to be nervous about, but um, but we're here for you. We're all here as a resource and, and we wanna help. So uh, from us in the orientation office, if you have questions about advising or uh, anything else about the university, feel free to reach out to us and we'll get you connected to the right offices. And, uh, and, if, the, and if the information is, uh, if, if we wanna double check and make sure of 
very specific circumstances because everybody uh, everybody is unique in in the in how we've how we've gotten to this point right now. So uh, if there's a question that we don't know, we can always connect you with the Drama Center as well. Uh, so um, so yeah. Anything from Draman? All right. Uh, so I was just I, the reason I didn't say anything, by the way, is just because I realize I'm putting our email in one more time because I messed it up the first time. So it is Draman Center at SCP.edu. So, yeah. but and just as a reminder, um, uh, these are both really wonderful offices. We work really closely with them. But if you can just see the volume of questions, they're just in the Q and A, just from one. Um, imagine, you know, their inbox and their phones look like. And we we really want to be helpful. Just know that sometimes it takes a little bit of time um, to get back to you. But we're doing that as um, quickly as we can, um, and just getting through all those questions. So. Um, and the, a reason that we're moderating too in the admission office is really handing them, handing um, our incoming students off to the respective offices. So you'll see us start in the admission inbox saying, hey, you should reach out to this office. As you come to campus, um, you know, we've been your main point of contact for so long, but we'll start directing you as you get to campus to what resources that there are available. Um, and we'll send you the email. And I think that will be the last email that you receive from the admission office with the, you know, the links and everything like that. Um, but um, we are so excited for you to come to campus this whole year. You know, we the admission office gets to know the students really well. And um, I'm so excited to, especially all the applications that we all read and we all read all of them um, to have you guys on campus and for you guys to be Broncos and just um, start this uh, next chapter of your journey. Um, it's, it's a great time. I met my, you know, college best friends and, you know, I'm in their weddings and everything like that. So I'm excited for you to experience all of that um, come September. Um, let's see, and like I said, these offices have their contact information. We'll send us links and everything like that. But I just wanted to thank you all for joining. I know that we didn't get to answer all of them. Um, uh, and like I said, I don't think we ever could answer every single question, but reach out to us as you have questions and as we prepare to welcome you guys to campus. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.